I've got to offer a perspective that has not yet been shared today. <laughs> Consider how much effort in so many other professions are invented in trying to compare excellence in one era with excellence in another. They try to do this in baseball. Who's better, Babe Ruth versus someone generations later? That's very hard. But they always converge on the following fact, that what matters is not what they look like now, but what they looked like to others at the time that they prevailed. And when I looked at our poster that was offered this evening, there is only one spaceship, spaceship, that's earlier than that one in that entire poster, and that's the flying saucer from <laughs> the day he registered still, and its weaponry was only the guy in silver underwear. So, what matters here is, what did that spaceship look like at the time it came out, compared with anything that had been imagined before? And when you consider that, that is the most astonishing, awesome, beautiful, seductive, What is it that makes that saucer into cell configuration so endlessly fascinating? Is it the embodiment of humankind at its best? The genetic need to explore the unknown, to push that upper right hand corner of the envelope and in so doing, discover what it means to be human? Matt Jeffries would have blushingly brushed all of that off and explained that the Enterprise was simply a solution to a theatrical problem, guided by preparation, hard work, and patience. All that other stuff? <laughs> That came from you and me, and Gene Roddenberry. The truth is that science fiction design success is the most fleeting of all. It's a moving target. Audiences are technologically savvy, yet Star Trek's USS Enterprise still looks ahead of the curve 50 years later, and it has spun off nearly a dozen restylings and probably hundreds, if not thousands, of fan interpretations. It is a singular anomaly and a stunning accomplishment for any film designer. Matt Jeffries, who was this guy? Aviator, historian, illustrator, engineer, and Hollywood art director. Walter Matthews Jeffries was born August 12, 1921 in Hershey, Pennsylvania to Grace and Walter Jeffries. Described as a happy little fellow by the attending physician, he would grow up in Hopewell, Virginia and carry with him a folksy good-natured charm throughout his life. From the time he could talk, Matt expressed a fascination with airplanes. Brother Richard recalls being amused by six-year-old Matt's distraction at the breakfast table one morning as he was busily making a perfect three-point landing of the Spirit of St. Louis alongside his plate of pancakes. He looked up earnestly at the bemused Richard and said, Someday, I want to fly way, way out beyond the clouds. No one realized just how way, way beyond the clouds those aspirations would carry him, or the rest of us for that matter. Building and sketching airplanes would become an obsession for young Matt. At the age of 17, he joined the Richmond Model Airplane Club and even went into business with a friend, selling model airplane kits to the neighborhood. Meanwhile, dark clouds appeared on the horizon, as that same year Adolf Hitler moved to annex Austria and Czechoslovakia. With the bombing of Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, Matt joined the Army Air Corps and was assigned to the 301st Bombardment Group as a flight engineer. In the co-pilot seat of a B-25, Jeffries crash-landed as a result of a jammed nose gear, suffering facial lacerations and broken front teeth. After the war, determined to pursue his interest in aviation art, Matt cut his teeth as an illustrator for Urco, the manufacturer of the Urcoop, a forward-thinking little plane that was taking the world by storm. Matt sharpened his skills working on their monoplane parts catalog and promotional materials. But the ambitious Jeffries was also quickly making inroads into the publishing world. His aviation art appeared in magazines such as Air Trails, American Modeler, Flying, and Air Progress, as he became known in aviation circles as a historian with an eye for detail. Then, in July of 1948, Matt was hired by the Air Research Section of the Library of Congress 
as assistant chief of graphics. Writers and historians, aware that Matt was a wellspring of information related to vintage aircraft, often turned to him to identify remnants of planes found in barns, weed-covered fields, and abandoned hangars. In 1956, he was approached by Warner Brothers Pictures in Hollywood to provide technical information on the X-2 Bell rocket plane for a movie starring William Holden called Toward the Unknown. It would be Matt's first contribution to film, and the die would be cast. Learning that several new aviation films were on the Hollywood tarmac, Jeffries took a chance and moved to Los Angeles on April 2, 1957, and was instantly hired by John Beckman, the art director of Bomber's B-52, starring Carl Malden. From East Coast novice to Hollywood set designer on a major film overnight. Pretty amazing. But the real pivot point was when Matt got a call from Desilu. The Untouchables television show needed a Ford tri-motor interior set. Right man, right job. The studio, not wanting to let the talented Jeffries get away, parked him on Ben Casey, a hit hospital drama starring Vince Edwards. Matt's technically sophisticated eye was put to work designing operating theaters and other hospital-oriented sets. Life was good. <laughs> Marianne Jeffries took some time to visit the 1964 New York World's Fair and returned to find that he was out of a job and his cubicle at Desilu had been cleared out. Your stuff's been moved into the big drafting room. You'll be working directly with the writer-producer, a guy named Rottenberry. You're gonna design a rocket ship. Well, Gene and Matt headed off and you bet they had plenty in common. Both pilots, both B-17 crewmen during the war. Jeffries described Roddenberry as a guy with extraordinary vision and a driving determination to produce a space saga unlike any other. Matt was impressed, but what this Roddenberry guy was describing was a far cry from the Buck Rogers he'd grown up with. This was no rocket ship, a space vehicle. Jeffries realized that he would need to consult with engineers and space scientists. Matt's associates in the aerospace community lined up behind him, including NASA and the Rand Corporation. Hundreds of sketches would follow before finding the solution, and Matt himself described his frustration with Roddenberry. Lacking a piece of this one and a bit of that one, the story is legend. We've all read it, we know it by heart. Some of us have even lived it for ourselves, and some of us have had our lives changed by it. So this would pretty much be where our story ends. Except that what Matt Jeffries conjured set off a spark that continues to grow to this very day. His revolutionary space vehicle launched hundreds of careers from scientists to astronauts to space artists and Hollywood designers too, infatuated with space travel and Matt Jeffries himself, six of whom you'll meet tonight. Space artists and designers like Matt drive the future of humankind beyond our planet for the reality begins with a dream. And although most of us will probably not set foot upon the red planet, it's good to know that Matt Jeffries and his students will probably have had a hand in goading some kid into doing it. Matt Jeffries' enterprise design solution was and remains an act of artistic genius, still hurtling forward of its original inertia, a fountainhead piece of futuristic architecture which will continue to convince, inspire, and entertain audiences for many years to come. Walter Matthews Jeffries, aviator, historian, illustrator, engineer, Hollywood art director, and unassuming genius, who would have blushingly brushed all of that off and gotten back to work. <laughs>